Uh, good afternoon all and welcome to this meeting of the Leisure and Culture Scrutiny Subcommittee on the 8th of March. It's not the 8th of March, um, 2022. Um, just to make you all aware, today's meeting will be recorded. Can I also welcome any members of the public and press to today's meeting? Can I kindly ask you to observe the meeting only and not speak or participate? Can I please remind you all to switch your phones to silent for the duration of the meeting? In addition, can I refer you to the protocols for remote meetings which have been previously circulated, namely your microphone should be switched to mute unless you are speaking. Should you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate via the chat function or by raising your electronic hands via Teams? I will assume you've all read the paperwork before us today prior to the meeting. Please only use the chat function to indicate if you wish to speak as an alternative to the electronic hand function or to raise a technical issue. When asking a question, can you please indicate which page number you're referring to? The first item on the agenda is to do a roll call. I'm Councillor Sonia Reynolds, the chair, and I am present. I'll now call on Charlotte, the Democratic Services Officer, to take the roll call. Thanks, Chair. So I will mark you as present. We've also had apologies from the Vice Chair, Councillor Mason. Um, Councillor Adam McGrath. Councillor Sandra Miller. Present. Councillor Suzanne Renkes. Present. Councillor Jane Jones. Present, Charlotte. We've also had a... Councillor Whitelock, you're in the meeting, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I got back. I may be leaving early though, but I am here for the moment, Charlotte. Thank you. There we are. No worries. I'll mark you as present. Apologies. I'd, I'd mark you as apologies in the attendance. <laughs> um, Councillor Anthony Richards. Oh. Councillor Jo Hale. Present. Thanks, Charlotte. And uh, Cabinet members, Councillor Alan Lockyer. <laughs> Councillor Peter Rees. Pre present, uh, Charlotte. Sorry, I couldn't get my mute button. Oh, sorry, it was my oh, fault. Yeah. Councillor Peter Rees. Yes, yeah, I'm here, Charlotte. And officers, Paul Walker. Present, Charlotte. Jean John. Present, Charlotte. Paul, Do uh, Paul Doyle. Present. Tammy Davis. There we are then, that's everyone, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Uh, we have uh, three items on the agenda two of which are verbal reports and the general monitoring. We will be obviously going through them all, uh, so all will be open to scrutiny. Um, looking forward to in with interest to the uh, verbal updates and the presentation. Um, are there any declarations of interest on the items on the agenda? I don't see any hands. So in that case, we'll move on. Um, minutes of the previous meetings. We have minutes to look at from the 23rd of September 2021. Can somebody propose that they're a true record, please? I think that, Chair. Thank you. And a seconder? Second, Chair. Was that two different people? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, then we have the minutes of the 16th of December 2021. A proposer? Move, Chair. If it goes, Chair. So thank you very much, both. Right, in that case, we move on and we go straight to Paul. Looking forward to hearing from you, Paul. Always worth hearing from. And <laughs> Interesting to know what's going on at Margan Park. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I start with, uh, I'll come on to the finances, but I, I'll start with giving an update on what's been happening in the park during this financial year uh, whilst we were still under uh, the restrictions. <clears throat> as you know, the Orangery uh, was dedicated as a vaccination centre. And I think full credit to uh, colleagues in the Orangery for the way they stepped up and they worked with the health authority um, to ensure that 
the orangery was held up as best practice as far as a vaccination centre. And an interesting one you may have seen chair on the news at uh, early doors was they did a piece from the orangery uh, with the uh, Royal Air Force Band were assisting as volunteers <clears throat> and they were actually sitting there playing a the piano and a clarinet whilst they were waiting uh, to go into uh, for their vaccination. So I don't think there were many vaccination uh, facilities across the UK who offered that. So, uh, and I particularly want to mention Darren Evans, uh, commercial manager, Deborah and Claire at the Orangery for the outstanding work they did do during that time. <clears throat> Excuse me. But obviously we were committed chair to refurbishing the Orangery. Uh, we got the bulk of that work done pre-vaccination. Um, as you know, we are uh, establishing the Orangery as one of the best wedding venues in South Wales. So prior to the um, uh, health board moving in, we refurbished the ladies' toilets uh, and made them, I guess, more of a hotel-type quality toilet, and they're very nice. Uh, we refurbished the bride's room, which is uh, a room where the bride and her mother and family can go to freshen up, etc. That was all done, uh, and it looks outstanding. We've now put a bar chair in the West Pavilion, which is at the far end of the orangery. We furnished it with um, wing back chairs and Chesterfield settees. It's the type of facility I'd like to go into uh, once the disco starts in the wedding in the night. Um, it's a gin and Prosecco bar, but it does sell uh, uh, bottled uh, beers as well. But of course, if you want a pint or a different drink, you can purchase it from the normal bar and then walk through uh, and use that facility. And again, it's been well received in the four weddings we've done this month when we started back our wedding season. Fairy tale land, uh, the children's village, which is adjacent to the Orangery, that was completely refurbished during uh, the first lockdown. Uh, and Wayne Curtis, who's now moved from the Knoll, and he is the estate manager in the park, secured a £17,000 grant recently, and they're presently refurbishing the interior of the little cottages and the houses and the castle ready for Easter. So again, um, that'll be an added attraction. We have the Children's Adventure Play Chair, that's down by the lake uh, towards the Discovery Centre, and that was completely refurbished and new equipment added during the lockdown. Uh, we've bought a new catering trailer. Cherry, oh, excuse me. We bought a new catering trailer out of our budget this year because of the performance of the park allowed us to invest back into the park to generate more income. So, whilst we have our Charlotte's pantry, we also have the Mario's, which we've been given a permanent loan of that down at Fairy Tale. From Easter, we will have a catering outlet down now at the Ferry. Uh, sorry, at the Children's Adventure Park, which will generate uh, more income uh, for the park. Um, we have 72 weddings booked for this season. Um, the highest we've had before is 50. Uh, but again, um, that we've bounced back well. You know, there is always concern when something has been used for a medical facility that people tend sometimes not to want to go, but that hasn't happened with the Orangery. So we have a lot of weddings we had to cancel and we've moved them into this year and we've had additional weddings and wedding fairs being held. Uh, and we've also secured £135,000 from Heritage Lottery funding uh, to uh, prepare a feasibility report on the future of Margam Castle. Our plan then is to draw down or uh, apply for something in the region of £30 million uh, to um, repair the castle, for want of a better word. Uh, but we're a few years off that, but we've started a journey now by appointing a consultant who will work with Mike Wynn, the manager of the park, to prepare a feasibility study. On the finances chair, um, we've had an excellent year. Um, as I said, we've been in a position where, because of our income streams and our um, Coming in below the, the budget, we've been able to reinvest uh, into the park. Uh, we've purchased this trailer I mentioned, Chair. We've done a lot of work 
to the uh, infrastructure of the park, store, dry storm wall in. Um, we put in new paths, new bridges, and we finally tarmacked the road at the back of the castle, which I drive down most days, and um, it was full of potholes. So that's now being resurfaced. So again, it's an opportunity to reinvest uh, to increase the income streams. On the finance, Chair, it, it, it's pleasing to report that um, if I start with Charlotte's Pantry or Catering Outlet, uh, during a pandemic, we reverted to um, takeaway sales only. Uh, we've continued with that practice because it has worked well and financially uh, we have reaped the rewards. So, for example, Charlotte was due to make a £43,500 trading profit, and that's everything, Chair, that's staffing, all the rest. We're presently on target to make a £119,000 trading profit, by, uh, and that's with a reduced uh, capacity in the park, because as you will recall, Chair, we had to use Eventbrite and reduce the numbers coming into the park uh, from Easter and right through the summer holidays. So, you know, that, that's a credit to the guys there, um, they've they've worked hard and we've, we're generating uh, 119,000 at the moment. Uh, with regard to the catering, um, we did um, take 47 and a half thousand pound uh, during the Luminate, um, the lit, lit walk chair you're aware of the Christmas event we do at the park. That generated a 63 and a half thousand pound in catered income. We also received another eighteen and a half thousand pound from two catering uh, temporary catering units that we did a deal with to bring into the park to assist because we were still, as you could be, uh, be aware, chair, we were still doing uh, takeaways only because we were still under some restrictions. Um, staying with Illuminate, uh, that the Illuminate this year was worth ninety three and a half thousand pound net to the park. That's the amount of money the council received as a result of Illuminate. We had 60,000 visitors to the event. And as you were aware, it was cut short by two weeks because Welsh Government changed the regulation just prior to Christmas. So, you know, we could have probably added another 15,000 visitors to that. But interestingly, Mike, when the manager of the park, because um, he looks good on TV, was interviewed uh, by ITV, S4C and uh, live GMT, uh, GMTV broadcast. Um, that type of advertising would be costing something like £15,000 a minute. Uh, and you may have seen uh, the, the rain show last week, I think. They actually love the park. So they came back and they did a piece from, of the rain from the park, which again is an excellent way of promoting the county borough. Filming again, our events team have worked hard, Chair. Um, we were anticipating a £26,000 profit on events in the park because of restrictions, but because of the additional filming we had, that is presently at £99,000 uh, profit uh, on the our events team. And I'm, I'm confident we will um, or well over the hundred thousand pound profit that this year on that, and you can see that the substantial difference uh, in what we were projecting and the reality, due to the fact that filming companies um, are coming back to the park. We used to use a gentleman called Gareth Skeldin, who was a production uh, manager. He actually brought Da Vinci's Demons to the park. For those who remember it, he had a lot of young people working with him then who are now production managers in their own right. So they are working for some major TV and movie companies. So they are now bringing productions uh, to the park. So this year we were involved again with his Dark Materials, which is the BBC uh, show. We had George Lucas and Disney film uh, shooting in the park. Um, we've had the usual casualty, Holby City, um, and Jamie Johnson, which is a, one of the biggest children's uh, films on uh, Netflix, I believe. Uh, so uh, the other uh, area chairs worth a mention is Ivy Cottage, our um, holiday uh, cottage there. 
we were projecting a five thousand pound profit on on that cottage this year. It's actually come out to fifteen thousand profit because of the stay vacations. Um, so again, uh, that that's a very nice uh, figure to report, Chair. Um, and that really is my verbal update. And happy to take any questions I can, Chair. Thank you. Any questions for Paul on that? No question, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jane. I think there were a few of us going wow on that one. Um, you know, so it's uh, yeah, wonderful, Paul. Thank you, Councillor Hale. Thanks, Chair. Paul, you mentioned the catering van. How much did that cost? To uh, van? Uh, top of my head, uh, Councillor Hale, twenty thousand pound. Okay, thanks. And that was Howell Jenkins' parting gift to the park. He allowed us to buy it. Oh, <laughs> OK, thank you. And Councillor Miller. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Paul, uh, you said there's been a number of uh, nice uh, refurbishments at, um, at the Orange Rear. And you said about the toilets being uh, refurbished. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me? What um, what provision there's been for uh, disabled uh, yeah, people? Yeah, certainly, so Chair. It's been not so good in the past. Yeah, in the Orangery, uh, we have uh, quite good, I would say, uh, disabled facilities, and they're still there. We're in the process of reinvesting some of our, let's call it profit, from this year to refurbish uh, two of the toilet blocks in the park. And that will include a complete refurbishment of the disabled facilities under the Welsh Government scheme. Uh, Clive Bernard's team, I think, with Carly in Tourism and Mike Wynn are playing for a grant uh, to uh, put additional disabled facilities within the toilet block down at the engine house and a toilet block in the courtyard. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lockyer. Yeah, just, um, uh, Paul, you mentioned Da Vinci's Demons, which uh, I think there were three series eventually. Uh, yeah. Because it was so successful. Uh, just for your sort of records, it's been re rerun on Now TV, I think. So, is it really? So Margan Park is still being uh, exemplified in its glory and hidden hidden sort of nooks and crannies because because you, you don't necessarily recognise it as uh, no. Margan by the time they mess around with it. But uh, no. those of us who have been in the park and love it, we can we can detect where it is. So it's not a problem. But it'd be certainly worth um, thinking about if you're advertising. Yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. So it, it hasn't gone away. It's still running as um, mm. a very successful show. Yeah, or, or oh. series. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for that, councillor. Yeah. Councillor Reese. Yeah, let Joe Hale go first, Chair. Uh, Joe. Oh, thanks, Peter. Yeah, I just wanted to say there was another series called um, Sex Education, um, which ran, and that was, um, I didn't realise until my daughter said to me, oh, it's Lucy and Margam, and that was, you know, that was really good as well. They showed quite a lot of Margam Park in that, so it's great to see that, uh, you know, we we're on television. Thank you. If you like them, Peter, I've got a question I wanted to ask. So I'll, I'll yeah. if I come in before you and let you finish off as cabinet member, I was just going to ask Paul. You know, obviously we lost income on weddings and on the use of the of the orangery. Um, what's what's the sort of difference between the overall target and and what we've achieved, given that you've done so well on all the other stuff and to, are to be you and all the staff are to be congratulated on that. Yeah. Uh, we recovered all the lost income, Chair, uh, from Welsh Government. Our finance colleagues did a fantastic job and we actually received £270,000 in lost income for the Orangery. So, um, and I think that was a bit of payback as well, because as an authority, we were supporting the health authority and we didn't charge them for the use of the Orangery. So Welsh Government were extremely supportive when we applied for loss of income. So uh, in the end, it didn't make a difference. Excellent. That's very good to hear. Thank you very much, Paul. 
uh, cabinet member. Thank you, thank you, uh, Sonia. No, I just wanted to say uh, and give my personal thanks to Paul and the team, to Mike Wynn and uh, Darren and all the team down there. Uh, we've met regularly throughout the uh, period of the uh, uh, COVID uh, uh, situation, but they've done a fantastic job and I really want to put it on record, the, you know, the work that they've done and, I, and that will also include the next uh, report that you have as well on the libraries, uh, Chair. Thanks very much. Thank you, Peter, for your support as always. Thank you, and I think we can all agree with that, Peter. I think you know, I was watching faces when the, the figures were coming through and against all adversity, you know, it's a triumph. So uh, Thanks, now I've only got to uh, to go to, to Wayne and, and Paul and say, follow that. <laughs> I was going to say, Chair, uh, Morgan Park, very difficult act to follow, but we'll we'll try our best on this one. Um, as members will be aware, we normally bill, uh, bring uh, the Welsh Public Library Standards report uh, to, to leisure. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, there's been a delay with the formal assessment from Welsh Government, but uh, we hope to have it ready for you for the next leisure committee meeting. Uh, but in the meantime, in order to update members on what's happened with the library service, we put together a PowerPoint presentation uh, which my colleague Paul will go through now, and then I'll take questions and comments from members. OK. OK, I'm just going to share my screen now so you can all see the report as I talk through it. So let me know if no one can see it. It's coming up now. Fantastic. OK. You might want to put it on a uh, slideshow because you're showing your whole screen at the moment so we can okay. see all the workings. I think it's currently showing as PDF. Right. Rather than the PowerPoint, so I'm not sure if that was. Is that better? If I scroll. Works well, works well enough, Paul, that, that, that's fine. OK, you, fantastic. Yeah. When NPT libraries closed in March 2020, the response from library staff was immediate. Within a little over a week, we had moved to an online library service, extended loan times and suspended all fines for overdue books, set up a programme of daily activities and events on all our social media pages, set up a digital network to ensure song and rhyme and book staff continued online, established communication channels so the staff could keep in contact with library members. A number of staff were redeployed to support the Council's pandemic operations. Others had to learn new skills quickly and demonstrated great flexibility, creativity and commitment at a difficult time for many. It was the most challenging time for us all, but we are proud of how library service staff adapted, innovated and rose to that challenge. Whilst libraries were closed, our members were able to use the wide range of e-resources that were available. We saw a significant increase in the usage of the BorrowBox service, providing e-books and e-audio books, with many new members joining. Neath Talbot played a key role in securing an extra £100,000 from Welsh Government to purchase e-books and e-audio for the whole of Wales. This was done within the first two weeks of the national lockdown. In addition, we were able to provide up to date newspapers through Press Reader and magazines via the Libby app. Library staff were on hand to provide telephone help for people using our online resources. Also, Ancestry.com was free to use at home for all library members to allow them to continue with their family history research. Feedback from our members tells us that this was greatly appreciated. As Welsh Government rules changed, we were able to reintroduce parts of the library service. The mobile library and home delivery service resumed in June 2020 and has continued to operate ever since. 
A call and collect service was introduced at all libraries, which meant members could request books and collect them from the library. Over 3,400 bags of books were collected by library users. Library staff were very proactive in selecting books to meet the reading needs of their members. Following consultation with staff, health and safety officers, unions and senior management, we created a recovery plan and began a phased reopening of libraries from June 2020. And by the end of August, all libraries were safely reopened for browsing and IT access. Assisted by Welsh Government's Cultural Resilience Fund, which allowed us to ensure essential safety measures were put in place, Neath Patalbert was one of the first library services in Wales to reopen. COVID safety measures meant that not all activities, events and services were able to return, but by putting library users at the heart of what we do, we have been able to welcome people back to the library safely. We know that restoring public confidence in visiting busy libraries will take time, and that is why we are following our recovery plan and taking our time also. For many of our members, the library has been a lifeline over the last two years, helping to combat isolation and provide a little bit of normal in a chaotic world. Once we were able to fully reopen our libraries, a number of changes needed to be made to ensure the safety of our visitors. Many of our activities and events continue to take place with restricted numbers and less than half of our PCs have been available. It was also clear that we still had to provide an online library service for people who felt unable to be out in public. Once again, the Cultural Resilience Fund proved invaluable as it allowed us to purchase equipment to ensure we could continue to deliver online content to a high standard. Libraries have been able to provide a safe environment for our visitors to browse books, attend activities and use the IT equipment. As digital skills have become more important, library staff have played a vital role in helping many members of our communities get online. One of the many examples of innovation has been the pilot project that is ongoing at Neath Library, where members of the public can borrow tablet devices. We hope to roll out this scheme to all Neath Patalbert libraries this year. We have been able to provide many different activities to our online users. These have included song and rhyme sessions, Sunday story times, adult learners week, family history sessions, weekly Lego club, the Saturday quiz and local history research. More recently, many of these, including song and rhyme, are now taking place in the library. We have been able to continue our work with schools, giving children the opportunity to engage with books, stories and authors with both virtual visits and actual visits in the classroom. Both the 2020 and 2021 Summer Reading Challenge were delivered online at school and at the library. Indeed, 2021 was one of our most successful Summer Reading Challenge programmes we have ever had. Class visits to libraries are slowly returning and are very welcome. One thing we have all missed is being able to hold creative and cultural events and activities in our libraries. As restrictions have eased, we have been able to reintroduce more back into libraries. We are currently delivering a wide ranging winter of well-being programme funded by Welsh Government at all of our libraries with creative arts and crafts as our main focus. It has been a challenging time for the network of community managed volunteer libraries. Since 2020, we have highlighted funding opportunities, which has led to the refurbishments of both Blind Gwynby and Cummer libraries, kept the volunteers up to date with the latest Welsh Government guidance, supported access to online resources and reading groups at a number of libraries, 
and delivered live and virtual events. We should take this opportunity to commend the dedication of the volunteers over the last two years in keeping these libraries open. During the last two years, we have been able to achieve many of our strategic aims in spite of the pandemic. We now have a new mobile library and home library service electric vehicle, which are transforming how we deliver these two vital services to some of our most isolated and vulnerable citizens. Both services have remained operational since resuming in June 2020. In the summer of 2020, the library service, together with ELRS, completed its relocation from its old headquarters in Valindra to the vacant Anismadi Primary School in Britain Ferry. To do this, we had to transfer over 240,000 items of stock from one location to the other. With support from Welsh Government funding and in partnership with Coit Frank Town Council, Skewin Library was relocated to Carnegie Hall in Skewin in March 2020. This has created many more opportunities for the library with enhanced IT facilities and more space for library users. And work is well underway on the new Neath Library as part of the town centre redevelopment. As a result of successive lockdowns in 2020, 2021, Libraries were only open for four and a half months in that year, all with reduced hours. As expected, the number of annual visitors fell by 88% and the number of book loans by 66%. At the same time, the number of e-book and e-audio loans rose by 100% in 2020-21, as digital content partially bridged the gap caused by the enforced closures. Since April 2021, the number of monthly visitors to libraries has grown by 51% from 13,894 to 21,007. The number of monthly physical book loans has increased by 74% from 11,448 to 19,969. However, compared to 2019, the number of visits is down by 62%. The number of book loans is down 42%. And these figures are consistent with a picture for the whole of Wales and the UK. There is still work to be done, but the service is moving in the right direction. With more activities and events returning to the library and with a new Neath Library on the horizon, there are reasons to be optimistic as we continue our post-COVID recovery. Thank you, Paul. That was uh, that was lovely and a and, a, and a, a good replacement for the for the fairly dull report that we would we would normally have received, I suspect. So um, and again, you know, sterling work done by staff, really quick response, really quick uh, support and turnaround for the general public. And I'm aware in my own community, we have a community library up here and the ongoing support for the community library throughout the pandemic and the the additions with borrowbox and, and other things were you know extraordinarily helpful so yeah it's it's been a good service and really well done throughout the lockdown any any questions from members at all or comments councillor whitlock yeah thank you chair just um a thank you to Paul and all the team for keeping everybody going through the lockdowns. Just um, going on past experience with the Welsh government. I hope they don't come down on everybody too hard about the drop in figures. We know we all know what they can be like in forgetting there has been a, pand a pandemic and we'll start criticising people. But from myself and the local councillors, a big thank you to our, our Camavan Library um and the rest of them throughout the borough i know ellen and the girls have worked really well here so thank you all for a job well done again thank you i'm assuming that you know the figures were counted in a very conventional way as opposed to others but we'll come on to that in the next uh in the next report 
So, um, Councillor Hale. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, Paul, I'd just like to say, you know, a big um, thank you to you and the team. It looks like you've done amazingly well. Uh, what a fantastic job. Well done. Thank you. And Councillor Jones. Yes, thank you, Wayne and Paul. Fantastic um, photo things. Uh, all I want to do is thank you very much for all the support you've given to us in Gwynby uh, Library. Thank you very much indeed. And Cabinet Member. Thank you, uh, Sonia. Just, just, I just wanted to comment, Paul, on the uh, Reading Challenge uh, programme that was very successful this year. And I know I, I took a small part in 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 that in in, in the schools. Um, I even did some magic, I think, Paul, didn't I, or something? Um, but uh, you know, the excellent excellent report, and thank thank all the team, everybody. And I look forward to the uh, establishment of the new library in Neath. I think that's going to be absolutely fantastic. So thanks to everybody. And yes, I think you're right. The, 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 the central Neath Library is going to be lovely. Um, now all we need is to reopen the, the smaller libraries that have been handed over to the community a bit more, you know, to be bigger facilities and, and, and more involved. That's, you know, the next move out to come back up the valleys with the library service would be excellent. Um, so uh, in that case, I think that's the end of that item. I see no more hands. So we can move straight in. That gives us a good background to looking at the uh, quarter three performance figures. Um, can I have any questions on that, please? I'm not seeing anything. So we are all aware of the situation that our services have been facing, not least libraries. If I follow through with the comment I made earlier, I'm assuming, Paul and Wayne, that the, the figures, that the numbers would be normally counted as on your know, actual physical visits. And given the amount of use with BorrowBox and other things that people have been making, you know, do we have the sort of figures that would show the other uses of the library or was it not really possible to record those? I mean, I know they're not part of the targets, but it might be useful to address any negativity that we do get. Yeah, I, I think when we get the next report, Chair, the Welsh Public Library Standards report, that will give some background. Um, a lot of the drop uh, in visitors is due to the fact that we haven't been able to put events and activities on in libraries. Now, gradually, what we're finding is as COVID regulations are easing, people are beginning to come back to libraries as public confidence is restored. So I'm hoping by the time we take our next report to committee, um, you'll see a big improvement. So I'm, I'm not too worried about the targets and the physical figures. It just seems so sad that we can't be more vocal about the, the actual events of people taking out books, people using books and and using the facilities the library's enabled online, etc. You know, rather than worrying about yes. you know, bums on seats. OK. So, yes. Yeah, we have uh, got data for um, online usage as well. Yes. I, I, I think you know, it's something we have to focus on. I think you know, it's been very well done. And I'm assuming um, out throughout the whole of the uh, performance management that there is some consideration of uh, the target setting for the next year going forward, um, given yeah. that obviously things have changed, things have, you know, I don't know whether, you know, that's a discussion being had or or what's happening there. Yeah, um, from the other figures, Chair, yeah, they are being reviewed uh, by our senior management team. I think Chris Mellis is taking a lead on it. So the, the new administration will receive whole new sets in that case for, for going forward. Excellent. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Thank you all. All I think we can say is, is thank you very much. Uh, an excellent set of reports um, and yeah, really 
very grateful for your efforts and work over the period. And as this is our last meeting, I think, you know, I don't think we've ever had a meeting, um, particularly a, a general meeting, not a specific, you know, focused one that has been that negative. So thank you very, very much and, and pass on our thanks and congratulations to all your staff. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Um, and we will um, therefore we move to the forward look programme, which is for noting and obviously will um, be a consideration for any future administration. Um, and urgent items, we have none. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And uh, I hope that some of us will see some of you <laughs> after May. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Bye bye. You won't be okay. seeing me, Chair. So goodbye, everyone. <coughs> bye bye. Thank bye, you bye, all. bye. 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 Bye